very much, everyone, uh, for joining us today for a very interesting webinar um, about the benefits that Portugal is putting together for people under 35. Uh, and a uh, very important age group, uh, countries are from aging population, Portugal specifically has suffered badly from young people leaving it uh, on a pretty regular basis. And um, uh, the main reason for trying to make life better for people under 35 has been to, to try and keep the local uh, young people with, with the future um, in Portugal. But uh, Portugal has a new government, even though it's a minority government, it's pushing towards making it more competitive and, um, and interesting for uh, all sorts of groups. But uh, by far the biggest effort has been done within that age group. So not just for Portuguese uh, to prevent them from leaving, but also for young, talented, smart people from all over the world to try and make Portugal the greatest choice um, for them. And uh, since uh, not all the world is doing very well nowadays, um, it's very timely, I would say. Uh, so uh, a very, very interesting. Uh, some most of what you're you here today is quite uh, completely new, actually. So uh, a very interesting. Very interesting time. And just before I click start uh, to get started with our presentation, um, introducing uh, the uh, amazing team that works with me uh, every day and is now uh, sharing the stage uh, for this webinar. Um, so, starting from uh, the, the furthest uh, is uh, Enrique Faria, who's a tax lawyer in our tax department. Um, and then I set up it's the immigration department, and then I also get the real estate department. And the reason is that we will touch today on all three of these subjects. So we, we believe that uh, you have to address holistically issues and you have to, it's not enough to just look at things from one perspective. Uh, if someone's considering moving a country, it's important to think about how to do that from the immigration perspective, what will be the tax consequences, and, uh, and also uh, how, you know, what, how does real estate work? Um, and there are also specific benefits in tax and real estate, so um, I think um, uh, it makes sense. And I'm um, the official founder of Fresh Portugal, also a tax lawyer, um, originally from Israel and the UK, qualified in both, and also in Portugal. Um, so, um, yeah, a, 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 good, a good part of our team um, today. Um, and with that, I think we can uh, get started. Um, so, I kind of introduce the team. And the subject, and perhaps uh, starting with uh, a question. Oh, let's see, it's uh, let me just change it so that you can see us all. Well, hopefully, you can see us now. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the, the first question is um, Is Portugal the best place in the world for under 35? And uh, if you ask, uh, uh, if you ask us, it's the best place in the world for all age groups, regardless of any tax. Uh, benefits, but now even more so, um, and uh, you can uh, decide uh, on your own uh, after you've heard that. Uh, a quick in intro, if you've heard our webinars before, you already know that, but for those who don't, I'll quickly repeat uh, that uh, Fresh Portugal is uh, now the largest uh, expat focused law firm in Portugal. Uh, we have uh, 11 full time lawyers, I think we're 12 now. Uh, full time has uh, changed since the presentation was done. Um, full time lawyers qualified in five jurisdictions. We're advising a very big part of, of the expat population that's coming to Portugal. At some point, we've calculated about 10% of all new Americans are talking to us, maybe 5 to 7% of British people. So, you know, big numbers uh, of people, but everyone is the uh, whole uh, world and uh, they have their own story, it deserves full attention, and we're uh, working very hard to do that. And we're very happy to say that we've decided to really focus on that under 35 uh, age group demographic. In fairness, we have a lot of clients in that age group, but it's not our most typical clients. We, we normally advise mainly families, uh, people that are you know, in uh, later stages in their lives, but occasionally we, we have very successful young people, and, and young people are, are medium successful but are, have great uh, futures. Ahead of them, and then we're very keen to expand that, and that's why we created the, this team that will be working um, and kind of constantly thinking of how we can support uh, that particular age group. And uh, if, if you uh, have 
particular interest in that. I'm not in the region, I'm in the Philippines. Uh, so, uh, so that's that. And just you know, one last point uh, if you stick to the end of the webinar, you know, we do, uh, the, every webinar that we do always ends with some super exciting, crazy uh, proposal that we come up with. So, if you, because we, we want people to really get value from uh, these webinars. So, we always sell something, but in a good way. And uh, uh, stick around until the end to find out what, what exactly I'm proposing uh, after uh, this webinar. And I promise you won't be ready. So, uh, with that, uh, I'll, I'll stop talking and I'll hand over to Enrique uh, to explain how, how this whole tax thing works. Thank you, Zev. Good afternoon, everybody. So, uh, this new tax regime in Portugal, if you are under 35, you can have for up to 10 years this new IRS job. So this is a tax benefit on your work income, meaning formal employment position or self-employed freelancer activity. So it's a benefit on your active income. So Portugal already has an amazing self-employment freelancer simplified tax regime meaning up to 200,000 euros per year, only 75% of your gross income is taxable here in Portugal. During your first year of a freelancer in Portugal, and it's important to highlight, highlight that, even though your client is outside Portugal, if you are in Portugal as a tax resident working in Portugal, this is a Portuguese source of income. So you must open a freelancer activity here in Portugal and invoice your international clients by the Portuguese uh, tax authority system. So if you invoice uh, less than 200,000 euros per year, only 75% is taxable. During your first year, you have a special 50% discount and during your, your second year, you have a 25% uh, discount. In addition, yeah. in, addition uh, in addition to the first 75%, thank you, yeah, sorry. Uh, and now the new under 35 uh, tax benefits, you can have a, an amazing relief. The new tax regime can exclude up to 28,000 euros from your taxable income. Uh, meaning during your first year, 100% can be excluded up to 28,000. So, and then the following years you have uh, reduced discounts but up to 28,000 euros, it's going to be excluded for your taxation here in Portugal. That's why this uh, IRS job is so good. We have here a table that uh, gives you uh, a good example. Uh, so if you have a gross income from 100,000 euros, for example, you're going to be inside the simplified tax regime because uh, less than 200K. So your final taxation in Portugal with the new under 35 tax regime is going to be during your first year uh, almost 3%. You're going to pay almost 3,540 uh, euros in Portugal. We are considering the 2024 tax credits, of course. Uh, it's an amazing uh, tax benefit. During your first year, you're not going, also not going to pay Social Security in Portugal. It's a special uh, exemption that you have here in Portugal for uh, self for freelancer. Uh, and the second year, the third year, and onwards, you're going to pay almost 15% of your gross income as Social Security, but with a good tax plan, you can reduce that. So you have here example that second year, for example, you're going to pay 15% uh, total taxation in Portugal. Uh, third year to the fifth year, you're going to pay around 20%. So your active work here in Portugal as a freelancer for digital moments, for example, if you want to come to Portugal, becoming a Portuguese tax resident, it's going to be a good deal here in Portugal. Um, so, yeah, I, I'll jump in here, I think. And, you know, there's always the question of, okay, what happens if I'm one of these uh, fortunate people who make 200,000, 300,000, 500,000, um, and so on, uh, with, with the IRS drawing still work for me and still make a meaningful impact? And, and the short answer is no. Um, it, it wouldn't make much of a difference, uh, and tax will be very high, uh, particularly once it goes to 100,000. But the long answer is, but it can work very well. And the, the reason that it can work very well is that uh, Portugal doesn't tax well 
it only taxes income. And generally, uh, people working through companies, and that's a very, very common thing for people to do, is to set up a company and uh, keep the money in the company until it can distribute. Uh, and um, if, if you structure it right, you can uh, basically hold as much money as you need within a company, any income, if you make a billion, if you make two billion, um, you, you can create a structure to support that income and hold the money in the company. And as long as you uh, you, you can live from 28, 50, 60,000 euros uh, that will bring into Portugal this, this active income and pay tax for, um, then uh, that your remaining your remaining income can, can stay um, in the base structure, uh, waiting for for the next benefit to come in, or your next move, or you know, perhaps the next country, um, and so on. So the, the beauty of IRS job in that sense is that it gives you a, a legit legal way to bring in uh, an amount of money that's sufficient for most people. You know, some some people um, really need more money to live for. For all sorts of reasons, but uh, for most people, uh, one person living out of 50, 60, 70,000 euros a year and a couple living on double that income is sufficient. Um, so you can bring that money uh, into Portugal, uh, pay very low tax, and, uh, and just keep the rest of the money out. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think that so that is the outcome. Uh, we, we're asked a lot about Spanish armor going away, and we think that. This benefit is actually for that age group, for most people, is actually better than NHR. Uh, NHR is, is 20% tax rate, which, as you can see, uh, you, you can in many cases stay under it, and uh, it doesn't divide all professions. So there's always some risk that the profession doesn't exactly uh, doesn't exactly sit. So uh, we, we feel that this age group has now been taken care of quite well by, by this new benefit, uh, just waiting for another tax benefit to come. The rest of the people, uh, but if you're under 35, it was just an amazing uh, choice for you. I think a point really worth mentioning is that if you do tax planning and you keep money outside of Portugal, and you also need to want to take advantage of the of the real estate benefits, you should pay attention to having enough taxable income in Portugal so that you can get a mortgage. Um, so you don't want to overdo tax planning as well. If you want to have enough taxable income, um, just not pay that much tax. If you can, and with that, um, I'm passing uh, the torch to uh, Daniel to talk about the real estate benefits. <laughs> so, Sam, thanks, Sam, for the presentation. And after the explanation that the media told us about um, the new tax regime for under 35, uh, you all should be aware for sure that there are some incredible news also regarding. Uh, the real estate uh, purchase and mainly the, the ERT, property acquisition tax, and the stamp tax for under 35. Um, there's, it is very important for everyone to understand that whenever you buy a home in Portugal, you are obliged to buy your property acquisition tax and stamp tax. But the new rules. Uh, that this government made since um, since August, uh, last August, established that under 35 that are not dependent from others, that the parents, um, and they 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 are buying the first home in a, in a Portugal, and it's for residential, and this is very important. It needs to be for their residential use are exempt from buying EMT, property acquisition tax, and stamp, uh, stamp tax. Another thing that is very, very important that you all need to be aware of is that Portuguese government doesn't care of your nationality, as long as you are a tax resident. Uh, if you are from Canada, Switzerland, or US, no, this applies to you. As long as you are here and as long you are registered as uh, a tax resident. Another thing that is important for you to be aware of is that uh, <clears throat> you cannot have uh, any other home in Portugal, and uh, there is a value that you cannot pass when you buy a home. You cannot buy a home of more than 648,000 uh, euros. Uh, if you uh, over 
when you get over this this uh, this value, you will not get this exemption. But um, you know, ask me, okay, but the exemption is until the three six hundred and forty eight. No, the exemption is until the three hundred and twenty four thousand euros. I'm not sure if you are all aware of, but if you when you buy a property of around three hundred for twenty four thousand euros in Portugal, you pay more or less in EMT and in stamp tax, you pay more or less thirteen to fourteen thousand euros. So in this case, that will be the amount that you will be exempt from paying. Of course, that you ask me, okay, but how it works if I want the house of four hundred? You will pay the tax from the difference between the three hundred and fifty four and the four hundred thousand. Um, so it's an amazing benefit of around three hundred k. There's also uh, another situation. Um, I know this passed a little bit fast, but there's another situation. You need to be in that home for at least six years. I have uh, clients that ask me, okay, but Imagine I go to Portugal, I have an amazing contract. Uh, I receive an offer to live. I, I bought a home in Lisbon. I received an offer to go to Algarve, and I love Algarve. Will I lose this exemption? You will not lose this, this exemption. Those, those are the situations where you can sell your home without giving back the money from the property acquisition uh, tax. To the, the, the state. Of course, we need to justify it, but you are able to, 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 to use this benefit, change your home previously to the six years, and don't lose the, 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 the tax that you pay. Um, yeah, there's also some situations that many people ask us. Uh, for example, uh, I'm 35 years old. I'm, uh, can I still use it? You can. Until you are 35, included, you can use it. Another question is, for example, I have, uh, my wife is over 35. I'm 33. Can I use it? You can. You'll have a 50% exemption. Um, for example, uh, my husband is Portuguese and he already has uh, a home in Portugal. Um, can I use it? You can, you apply also the 50% exemption. Um, these are the, 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 the situations where you can use it, but you must be aware that a part of Portuguese government, if you, and if you are the only one that requires this exemption, have already a home or a land, some kind of property uh, in Portugal, even if you receive it uh, under an inheritance, for example, you will not be able to require this uh, exemption. This is very important. Normally, it doesn't uh, expect or foreigners don't have it, but you need to know this rule. Another very important thing is that houses under construction normally don't have records yet. They need to be finalized. So this doesn't apply to, to houses under construction. Only applies to houses that are already done and ready to use. Attached to this EMD uh, and stamp tax um, exemption, there's also a benefit that is very good, and you probably all be aware of it. Uh, from uh, 11 September, if I'm not mistaken, 11 September, uh, you can also use the, the guarantee, um, guarantee option that the government gives. Um, whenever you buy a home in Portugal, it's normal to be uh, 10 and up to 20% of the down payment. Uh, but the government says, okay, young people under 35 normally don't have 50, 100K to, to give for a property. What can we do? We can give a guarantee to the banks um, and the, the banks will then uh, borrow you the, all the 100% that you'll need to buy a home. Of course, this has rules, the main rules are the same. It's like you need to be under 35, not being independent from your parents or the third party, be an ex-resident, you can be of you can have uh, any nationality, but the houses, and this is very important, 
the houses cannot cost more than 450,000 euros. Another thing that is very important is that you cannot have a gross income of more than 81,000 euros a year. Um, another situation that we need to be to be assured that we need to assure is that this needs to be a house for your residential use and uh, it needs to be your first house. And another good thing and that is that you can attach this benefit to the exemptions of the, the taxes. You can use them both. You don't need uh, to choose to choose um, any of them. You can use it both, which is amazing. Um, since you, uh, you already know this is very recent, uh, and you, you can read that it's already working, but the banks are not giving because uh, they don't know exactly how it works. This is in a process where the banks are uh, saying, communicating with the government, saying that they will apply this benefit to other countries. But we think that by the end of November, beginning of December, it will all be ready and you will be suitable to, to get this guarantee from the, from the state and you'll be able to use it when by your so buying the home takes a little bit time, so you can start doing it now at the end of life. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. So if you're all on a and you're not yet in Portugal, so I think why you're, you're already in Portugal, perhaps uh, the only thing that's of interest to you is, uh, is the new tax benefit uh, and, uh, and perhaps the real estate. But if you're, you're not very keen to come to Portugal and um, uh, you're, you're able to uh, get past all the all the people around our office coming from uh, uh, politically unstable countries or not so thrilled about recent political developments. Um, then um, you should be talking to Manuela um, and uh, how to actually move. So uh, Manuela, um, how uh, someone wants to come to Portugal? Still, it's still the, the doors are still relatively open, right? If you come yes, to the absolutely. Well, for European citizens, if you are a European citizen, uh, the process is straightforward. Once you have a proper accommodation in Portugal or a long-term lease agreement or a property title under your name, you can basically just go to the town hall of your, the city you'll be residing and request a request certificate, the certificate of residence in Portugal. Very straightforward. Normally, the certificate is issued on the same day, okay? Then, uh, well, for non-European citizens, Portugal offers many options. Okay, today we are briefly discussing just uh, th three options. Okay, three of them, which are the most common: uh, D7, D8, and the D3. And uh, they can also be very attractive for under 35. Uh, the D7 is basically for passive income earners. Okay, the minimum income is around 350 euros per month. The D8 is for the digital nomads, remote workers, and the minimum income is, is around 3,400 euros, okay, to, to, to qualify, and to apply. And the D3, that is for highly qualified professionals, okay, for, for this option, the, the applicant needs at least a job offer in Portugal, okay. The process, uh, all of them generally takes around six months to be concluded. The application starts at the Portuguese consulate of the applicant's current legal residence area. Okay, so first we attend an appointment uh, with four VFS, which is the Portuguese consulate's uh, official partners. Okay, or the, uh, directly at the Portuguese consulate, and then the Portuguese immigration authorities have 60 days to review this request. Once the the the, the request is reviewed. Uh, do we approve? The visas will be valid for 120 days. And that's when the applicant must come to Portugal to convert the visas into a proper residence permit. So they will attend an appointment with the immigration office here in Portugal, I'm on. And uh, yeah, that's when the, the, officially, the applicants officially become residents. Okay. One very interesting aspect about uh, the D3 is that you can apply directly in Portugal. So you can basically come to Portugal as a tourist and as long as you meet the criteria, right? You have at least a job offer in Portugal and you 
class called education, so case of life. You can apply directly here instead of going to the consulate. So yeah, depending on the situation, it can be also a bit faster. Amazing, thank you very much, uh, and, and I think it's fair to say that if people do it properly, uh, as they, they, they do it with you, um, or uh, someone someone almost as good as you, uh, it, it works. It, it works well, it's pretty yes, smooth. as long as the, the, the requirements and the, well, pay attention to the requirements, it will have a successful outcome. Yeah, so still open doors relatively, at least for yes. now, uh, and who knows for how long.